Hello, my name is Jacob, and I'm a Norse pagan. And ever since arriving here in Munich, Germany, I've been trying to think of a way to wrap my normal content into a way to also share the beauty and the strange world of Munich, Germany. I've thought about doing a separate little series where I only talk about, you know, German history, where I talk about Munich, but instead I think I'm going to wrap them together um, and make this paganism on the go because I am traveling. I'm often walking all around the city every single day. And so I want to take you with me while also talking about something to do with paganism. So today we're actually going to talk about the altar pieces that I took here with me and how to have smaller altars um, for people in the military or people on the go or people getting into the faith for the first time. So I'll be going over what I took with me here to Munich, Germany. I'll also be talking about the history of the Victory Gate, which is the first thing you saw in Germany in the first reveal video that I did. Um, I'll also be talking about how my German is doing, um, small little tidbits that I've learned along the way, um, but also be showing McDonald's in Germany to you. I know this sounds simple and silly, but seriously, it's been a crazy experience to see how different it is here. I don't even love McDonald's that much, but I think I like German McDonald's far better. It's amazing. They have a vegan burger. It's crazy. So I'll be doing all of this today in this video in the first episode of Paganism on the Go here in Munich, Germany. So while I'm walking to my destination to film, I figured I would go ahead and tell you and give you an update on how my German is doing uh, because I have been trying to get better. Obviously, I've been navigating the streets pretty well. You can get by with English pretty well. Um, most people speak enough English to be polite when you're ordering food, but I have gotten to the point where I can order coffee pretty much in full German. Now, it's very simple German at the same time, but I am able to do it. It's pretty simple. You just walk up and say, a coffee, please, basically. I'm coffee bitter. Um, now, you know, reading a menu can be a little difficult. However, I have been cheating with that. I found out that Google Translate actually has a camera feature that allows you to translate menus and text in a different language on the go. It is not 100% accurate, but when it comes to more complicated menus, I prefer to be using that, um, especially as I'm getting used to it. I'm still trying to learn, but you know, this is, honestly, it's helped tremendously. But what more do I need than coffee? So I'm coffee bitter or on latte macchiato bitter. Uh, and, you know, I can say enough to, you know, say all is good, you know, how is everything, you know, all is good, you know, question, all is good. Um, and then, uh, you know, servos is a Bavarian term. It's either a greeting or a goodbye from what I've learned. Again, interestingly enough, is ciao is something that is actually Italian. And it seems like most people here in Munich say ciao when they say goodbye. So all things I'm picking up on the go. Um, so it's been an interesting experience to learn a different language on the go that I've really never learned before. So the main topic of today's video is something that does kind of go along with paganism on the go, is that at home I have this big altar space and I definitely wanted to bring some of those objects with me. Um, and yet I can't bring the entire table, I can't bring all of my bones, so I really had to limit what I brought. So today I really wanted to talk about how to take your altar with you or altars on the go. I do think this is gonna benefit quite a few people. I do think it'll benefit people that are on the go a lot, people that travel for business or just travel for pleasure, going for a place for an extended period of time. I think this will also benefit people in the military. This is, this is a question I get asked all the time, is how do I perform you know, you know, know, rituals or how do I have any form of religion while I'm actually serving in the military, especially if you're deployed. Um, so we actually do have a podcast episode, I will link down below, that goes through all of this where we actually do talk to somebody who is the pagan representative, the heathen representative in the military and goes through all the rules and regulations as far as oath rings, mealneers, beards, and travel altars. So I also think this is going to benefit people who cannot have massive altars, who cannot have big altars, people who are just getting into the faith for the first time. Um, as we have said many times on the podcast, and I think I've said on videos as well, is don't aim for these massive altars right away. They're going to build themselves over time. So something like this is a really good starter, and it really can kind of limit you. But I have everything in here I need for my own personal practice, at least for a little while, and I think it will satisfy me and my spiritual and religious needs. I'm standing in front of the Sacred Tor, or the Victory Gate, which was constructed in 1852 by Ludwig I, the King of Bavaria. Bavaria was a kingdom that was eventually absorbed into Germany. Much of Germany was a bunch of petty kingdoms that eventually did unite. 
However, until that point, Ludwig I was one of the last kings of Bavaria and his son and heir, Ludwig II, was the final king, mostly because he spent too much money on monuments. However, Ludwig I built this as an honoring of the Bavarian army and as a symbol of victory. At the very top of the monument, you can actually see the goddess Bavaria, which stood as a symbol of the Bavarian nation. And you can still see that pride in the people here in Munich and in Bavaria in general, as they're very proud of their individuality, of their independence, and of their unique culture and architecture. Sadly, in 1945, when the damage was sustained in World War II, this building was actually slated to be demolished. Thankfully, a team got together and decided to preserve the building and restore it to the way it was as best they could before the war. However, they did change the building into a symbol of peace rather than a symbol of victory of the Bavarian army. They changed the dedication on the top to dedicated to victory, destroyed by war, urging for peace. What the Victory Gate stands for many people now is the introduction to the old district of Munich. As it did for me, when I was going through the city, I was seeing mostly modern buildings. And then as soon as I saw the Victory Gate and I looked through it, I could see the old districts of Germany and the old districts of Munich, which is the reason why I'm here to see the old world, not to see the modern buildings and the cars that are all going around me, but to see the old city that lies beyond the Victory Gate. So as you can see, this is very tightly packed in here, uh, but I did get all of the essentials. I was actually very pleased. Honestly, this is very aesthetically pleasing in itself. How I was able to fit everything in here. Now, originally it actually did get stuck when I tried to open it as soon as I got out and I ended up scratching it um, because I packed it too tightly, but I am very pleased with all the things I was able to bring. So of course I had to bring a statue to Odin. Um, this is a very small travel one. Um, if I can find the shop, I'll put it down below. Um, but I really like this craftsmanship. I like this, you know, kind of aesthetic. Uh, and again, I like how portable it was. Of course I had to bring my runes as well. Somehow I managed to fit these in here. Um, you know, I, I figured I definitely wanted to practice with these, but finding a nice small bag, I do have bigger bags, but this was a very simple bag that I could bring with me. And naturally I had to bring the wooden spoons if I brought, brought the runes. Um, so if you haven't already, please check out the rune video that I have made where I get smacked with a wooden spoon quite a bit. This was how I was taught the runes is the wooden spoon method, which is a very strenuous method and it took me a long time and I'm still learning them. But I had to bring this both out of respect for my teacher and the method of the wooden spoon. So the other thing that I think is really crucial to bring, um, I don't know where, um, I got this as a gift. I don't know where the person got it, um, but this is a small little offering bowl. Obviously it's really tiny. You're not going to put a whole bottle of meat into this, but for a small little ritual, I think this is perfect. And again, it fits into this box perfectly. So if you're in the military or just travel a lot or um, really just can only do small rituals, especially when you start out, I really do think something getting something this size um, would be really helpful for you. I mean, really, this is like a shot, a shot of an offering. But I think, again, you know, really these two things, I, I think if you had these two things, like a God you want to, you know, dedicate to or just a symbol of the faith and then a offering bowl of this size, I think you, you'd be good to go. This was actually from Germany. Um, this was given to me as a gift um, from someone in Germany. So I brought it with me to bring it back to Germany. Um, so it felt very fitting. Um, certain things I brought from gifts from uh, members of the community. Um, I forget exactly what this is, but this was given to me as a gift as well as this um, this uh, arrowhead as well. I, again, I can't remember the material, but I love this material. These were given to me as gifts from members of the community. Um, and I wanted to bring that to remember the community that I left behind. And it will be returning back to. Um, I have also brought rings with me as well. These are ritual rings. Um, this one was made by Weirdcore um, or Bloodforge, who I get most of my things from, including my Mjolnir. Um, this is a ring I only wear during rituals. I doubt I'll be doing too many rituals while I'm here, at least not big ones, but I figured I would bring it with me, you know, to, I, you know, I don't know, I don't really like using the term charge, but you know, I want to bring this with me to Germany because this is an important part of my public ritual wear. I also brought this ring, which is a Viking ring. I don't know if you'll be able to see the detail very well, um, but everything I have been able to find is that this ring is a berserker ring. Um, I found it in kind of like, almost like a trash pile of Viking artifacts that have been, you know, taken from dig sites and things like that. Um, I bought it in Tennessee, I think. Um, and so th this ring was a part of a really a bunch of generic rings that mostly just had flowers on it. But this ring has a little dude on it. And everything I can find is he's holding a sword and a bundle of arrows. And every figure and artifact I've been able to find with that same symbol has been tied to Odin Berserker. So I thought that was really cool. And I wanted to bring it at least a little bit closer to where it was from. Um, I also brought this. This is Fool's Gold that came from the Southern Gathering. Um, you know, again, a memory to the gatherings. This is really brought to remember the gatherings and the people I left behind. And I really can't wait to get back to. 
Um, I did bring this as well. This is, you know, to me, a symbol of the, you know, nature and the land of North America. This is a bison tooth. Um, so, you know, also remember that, that North American, you know, place I came from, so to speak. You know, I am here in Germany, but, you know, I also am American, fairly proud to be an American and definitely miss it. I miss certain aspects of America while I'm here, even though I am enjoying the beauty of Germany. Lastly, I brought these little vials. Um, I don't know where to get them again. I get so many things from people in this community. This is a tradition that started in the Wisdom of Odin community, at least from, you know, in our community. Um, people started bringing these vials to collect water from, you know, lakes and rivers and streams that we connect with um, and have rituals at. So, of course, I wanted to bring one. I plan on getting water from the Alps or snow from the Alps to keep in there. And then this one I plan on uh, filling from a, I think, either the river here in Munich or, you know, any other place I go. Oh, probably um, we're going to that one village that's in like a bog. I might get some bog water from an ancient German village. That would be really cool. Um, so I definitely wanted to bring these for my own personal use and for my, you know, rituals back at home. So now is the terrible task of putting this all back in here. Um, again, the spoon is definitely the problem causer, causer when it comes to uh, packing this all back in. Um, but this travel altar box has been really helpful. It's something I bring to gatherings personally. Um, and I can only bring back so much with me to America. So I'm going to try to limit it to only things that can fit in this box in the way. Yeah, good enough. Seriously, look how easy this is. Like, you know, big old bag. This is what I kept my carry-on bag, so I'll probably put this on the way back home. I got this back here in Germany. I really like it. Um, you know, it slides right in there. Um, you know, it's very portable. I can even take it with me if I'm going to the Alps or something like that. Seriously, having this is, has been really helpful in my, uh, my pagan path. All right, now the camera needs to go in there. All right, get in there. One critique I have of Germany so far, and I do plan on making a video talking about my five favorite things, my five least favorite things about Munich, Germany, when I actually leave. And number one on the list of things I do not like. I mean, I do love the coffee. The coffee's been great. But there is hardly any public bathrooms here. And if there are bathrooms, they're not public. You have to actually pay to go in them. I only know of one, and I have to go to that one, which is like 20 minutes away, and I had to pee 20 minutes ago. So yeah, not a big fan of the no public restrooms. Yes, I really did just travel all this way to this beautiful building to use the bathroom because this is what Germany makes me do is go to a beautiful place like this and only think about taking the piss. Baldur's beard, what is this? 60 cents? 60 euros? That's basically a US dollar to take a piss. What is this? I'm over here talking about important things like pagan boxes and taking a piss in Marines Platz. There's about 12 different news studios over there talking about soccer. I think I have the right priorities. All right, so I am officially in German McDonald's. Now, the reason I wanted to show this to you is because I do think it shows a very interesting aspect of German culture, and that's that everything here is a little bit healthier and also a little bit more expensive. I mean, obviously, they use the euro, which is more expensive than the dollar right now. And so this entire meal, I mean, it's burger and chicken nuggets. Um, so this ended up costing me about nine euros, which is about $11 US. So I do find that prices here are pretty expensive, especially when you translate it to the euro. Now, the reason I actually really wanted to show this to you is because they have a vegan burger here. Um, this is something I've never seen in the States, and it's pretty amazing that there's a big enough vegan population and a health population here that they actually commit to a vegan burger. It really is. It's really good. I'm so surprised. I'm not vegan myself, as I do also have chicken nuggets here, but this is something I don't think you'd find in the States. I don't know if we'll ever get. Well, I mean, obviously Burger King does have a vegan burger, but it's honestly delicious. They do also have waffle fries here as well. I think it got lost in translation, but I wanted those, so I didn't actually get them. Um, but the waffle fries are not as good as, like, Chick-fil-A's, but it's, again, crazy that they actually have them here. And I wonder why that's become a thing here, is that the Germans wanted waffle fries. 
I've heard for a long time that McDonald's in different countries is different. Um, and, you know, it was not something I really thought of when I came here in Germany. Uh, right as I got off the plane, I was starving and I wanted something familiar. My German wasn't very good, so we got McDonald's the first thing. And I was blown away by how much better it is. Um, the chicken nuggets, yes, they still look like McDonald's chicken nuggets. They have different sauces. I'm using a sweet, a sweet chili sauce right now. Um, and it's actually really good. But the chicken nuggets have far less sodium on them, which is something I really like because the food in America is far too much salt on it, especially in McDonald's and fast food. So, and I think they use better meat. Oh no, it just tastes better. Thank you for joining me for Paganism on the Go, episode one. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. This is definitely a series in the making, but I really want to make sure I show you my experiences here in Munich, Germany, as be well as being kind of your tour guide, but also continue to make pagan content. So I hope this is a really good combination of those subjects. So let me know down below what you think so far, what you would like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, maybe this ugly face, I'll show you more of Germany. But also put down below the questions you would like me to answer in the next video about Germany. Um, um, or how I'm experiencing things, how I'm experiencing the bathroom situation, the heat, how's the weather. I don't really care, but ask me questions about Germany and I would love to answer them in the next episode. But my name is Jacob, I'm a pagan on the go, and until the hall, scoff. When I started The Wisdom of Odin, I didn't want to just be another generic YouTuber where I stand in front of a screen or hide behind an animated version of myself. I really wanted to show you my life, my journeys as a pagan, and, and that means while I'm here in Germany, which I didn't actually come here for pagan reasons, this was just a thing I wanted to do in my life, and now I want to share it with you, and I really hope you enjoy these videos. So if you want to continue to support me in traveling like this, continue to support me in my dream to bring you creative pagan content, please think about donating to Patreon. There's a lot of really great benefits, but truly, you're the only reason I'm able to do things like this and share it with you. So please think about donating down below, and thank you so much even for just watching these videos. And until the haul, skull.